Hey, what's up guys? This is Jinkegs D here. Hey, this is my man. And this video is going to be about the World of Warcraft races in the game. I'm going to give you my opinion on, you know, which race you should choose depending on what you're trying to do in the game, whether you are new or experienced. So I really hope this video helps. If it does, I definitely recommend you leave a like. It would make me so happy. I love all your pancreases. It'll be awesome. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave um, the is in the annotations uh different sections of the video so you guys can click on that and yeah so let's go ahead and get started all right so we're going to start with the human first guys um the racials include increased spirit bonus to reputation gains 10 percent to be exact increased expertise with swords and maces they can break out of speed altering and trapping effects so basically the human would be good for any class that really needs a cc like a movement breaking ability and any class that uses a sword and a mace has increased expertise, but it makes little of a difference. Um, but the reputation gains are always nice. Next up, we have the dwarf. Their racials include the stone form ability. They have increased expertise with range weapons and maces. They're resistant to frost damage. And they find additional archaeology fragments and survey faster. So archaeology is a lot easier. Um, their resistance to frost damage is nice. The stone form ability is very useful for pretty much any uh, class. And the increase in the weapon damage really isn't all that important, but it, it helps. So next up, we have the Night Elf. The Night Elf may fade into the shadows. They are more difficult to hit. The Wisp form while dead for faster movement. They're resistant to nature damage and the faster movement while stealth. So basically, they have the skill Shadow Meld, which allows them to disengage in combat, just go invisible right then and there. But if people see you, obviously it's not going to work out that well. But it helps a lot, and if you're someone like a rogue that has a stealth ability, you can pop stealth directly after Shadow Meld and work into what you were doing to begin with. I don't know if the Feral Druid can do that, I'm not exactly sure, but pretty much anyone with a stealth ability like that is going to be able to do that. The dodge chance is really helpful, and you have 5% more movement speed while you're stealth. Next up, we have the Gnome. Their racials include escaping from speed altering effects, increased mana pool, resistant to arcane damage, the engineering skill increased, and increased expertise with daggers and one handed swords. So they have a skill similar to the human's EMFH on a shorter cooldown that also allows you to um, escape from movement impairing effects. They're basically a freaking stealth the whole entire time. You're like a little ant playing as a gnome, no one can really see you, so. Perma stealth for the win. <laughs> the resistant to arcane damage is really helpful. Uh, if you want to go into engineering, that helps. Um, and once again, the expertise isn't all that important, but it helps. Next up, we have the Draini, Draini, Draini Havlaha, which their racials include the jewel crafting skill increase. They may self heal or others over time. They have a regeneration ability. The chance to hit with melee and spells increased, so they have a higher hit uh, chance. They're resistant to shadow damage. So. You can look like the freaking alien race off Star Wars, so that's just pretty much awesome. Uh, their regeneration ability, I think it heals for 20%. Uh, I'll just play it on the screen for you guys. That's always awesome. And lastly, on the alliance side, we have the Worgen. The Worgen can periodically move quickly. They have a higher crit chance, which is only 1%, not that big of a deal. Resistance to nature and shadow damage, awesome. Skinning skill and speed increased. So, whenever you transform into your wolf form, you gain uh, temporarily speed. And you can basically go into all fours as if you were mounting a, or if, as if you were riding a mount at level 20, which is pretty helpful because you don't have to actually buy a mount. And you have a skill called Dark Flight, which gives you 40% movement speed. That is epic. So now for the horde side. First off, we have the orc, which they may enrage to increase damage, resistance to stun effects, damage done by pet increased, and increased expertise with axes and fist weapons. Once again, the expertise isn't all that important, but it also helps. Their enrage ability increases depending on level how much it'll increase, but it boosts your DPS, so who the heck doesn't want that? I think the resistance to stun effects is about 15%. Uh, it just either lowers the duration by 15%, I mean. And damage done by pets? Nifty. Next up, we have the undead. The undead can remove fear, sleep, and charm with their racial ability. They may consume corpses to regain health and stamina, and stamina mana with cannibalize. And they can drain health from enemies upon chance of attack, and they're resistant to shadow damage. Undead definitely have a super high PvP potential. I want to go ahead and point that out because of their uh, CC removal ability, their cannibalize ability, and whenever they have a chance to or they have a chance to heal every time they attack. And how many times does a hunter attack in two seconds? Like nine thousand 
Hint, hint, wink, wink, right there. Next, we have the Tarin, the giant cow race. They may stomp, stunning nearby opponents. Their maximum health increased. It's increased by 5% to be exact. Their herbalism scale and speed increased. That's always helpful. And they're resistant to nature damage. Who doesn't want 5% more health, uh, AoE stun, and to be a freaking giant cow that can do anything? All right, so now we have the Troll. The Troll has a Berserk ability, which increases attack and casting speed. They have increased regeneration. To be exact, you actually have 10% more regeneration, and while in combat, 10% of your health may be regenerated. Damage increased versus beasts. Increased expertise with ranged weapons and the reduced duration of movement impairing effects by 15%. So they're definitely very good for PvE because of the more damage and the berserk ability. They have high PvE potential in my opinion, but once again, this is just my opinion on this stuff. And now we have the Blood Elf, the super aesthetic race in the game, which is pretty much just for looks. But their enchanting skill is increased. They can restore resources such as mana or energy with their racial ability that may silence nearby opponents, arcane... What is it? Arcane... Unprofessional. <laughs> and they're resistant to arcane damage. And lastly, on the horde side, we have the Goblin. They can rocket jump forward, they can launch rockets at enemies. Those are two abilities which you have to choose between one on cooldown. Basically, you have two abilities, and whichever one you use, both of them are on a cooldown, so keep that in mind. They receive vendor discounts, the lowest discount no matter where you are. And you can summon a personal bank. It's like a mobile bank for you. That's awesome. They have increased haste and the alchemy skill and potion healing increased. And I want to go ahead and say that the goblin and the worgen have the two most fun starting areas in my opinion. Alright, and lastly we have the pandaren. The pandaren can obviously join the horde or the alliance. You can be both sides, so that's always awesome. You may put enemies to sleep with the touch of your hand. You have an ability that... De dis <coughs> Decap decapacitates enemies for 4 seconds. You have inner peace, so your rested experience lasts 2 times longer. Uh, you get more benefits from eating food, your cooking skill is increased, and you take 50% less falling damage. Alright guys, so be sure to remember that no matter what race you uh, play, they're mostly for aesthetics for most people, but some people like to um, go majorly into PvP or PvE, and some races give you better benefits than others depending on which class you play. So make sure to pick the uh, right class, races are very important, and they can help you out a lot in PvP and PvE, sometimes majorly, drastically, and sometimes not even at all, so it all just depends. and. Once again, this is ShinkeggsD signing out. If you enjoyed this guide tutorial, I will be making more of this for other things in the game. Please leave a like, and I'll be seeing you guys later.